Hey. <laughs> hey, Jim. We're inside the beautiful Mercedes. And the beautiful Mercedes is inside the garage again. Oh, I'll tell you what. The transmission is still no bueno. And I'm talking myself into opening it up again. I've pulled the scan on it and it's indicating one bad solenoid out of the eight that are on the conductor plate. And it's also indicating, and this is one that's gone back since the very beginning, that there's something wrong with the um, position sensor. And if you watched the last transmission video, you could see where I was putting it back together. There was a little slide assembly on the side of the conductor plate that goes in and out of a little device there. And it's got a particular uh, number on it that comes up in the scan. Let me show you the diagram. This is the diagram that ECU testing sent um, for the 7G Tronic, which is what we have. Now I had this conductor plate out. They overhauled it and replaced a bunch of components. They did not replace, I mean, I kept all of my solenoids, the four here, the four here. So when I took this car apart, it had eight code problems. Now it's only got three. And one of them is that solenoid right there, 3Y, or Y38Y1. Uh, so I'm going to look into possibly getting a new one of those. And then this Y38S1 is my range sensor right here. So I'm not sure if this is something I can just pull off with a couple of bolts and replace. Or I read somewhere where someone said that there's a little magnet inside that might get coated with little bits of metal debris. And since the first time I did the, the transmission service, there was an appreciable amount of very fine metal debris on the grid type magnets. It's on the bottom of the pan. So it's conceivable that there could be a, a, a fine layer of metal debris on an internal magnet on that thing. So I'm talking myself into, for the third time, <laughs> lifting this car up and taking that pan off and trying to fix it. But that's going to be another day. Today, we have this. I ordered this from Amazon. And what this is, is it is a, a monitor that clips over your rear view mirror. And then it has a dash cam on the side of the, the mirror overlay. And then it also has a back dash cam that also works as a reverse camera. And you know what we need that on? This. So I'm going to open that thing up and see about installing it. Okay, I bought this thing uh, just like yesterday <laughs> I ordered it so it got here the very next day and it cost $75 all in shipping included it's manufactured by a company called van top uh, it's an H right here it's an H 610 and eh, I figured hey 75 bucks how bad could it be you know, made in China, of course. Mm -hmm. The box is pretty stout. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's our rear view mirror deal. There's the monitor built in. It just clips on the other mirror which I don't really use because that camper shell now blocks pretty much the whole view out the back, and I really do need a backup camera. But meanwhile, it has a forward-facing, constant on-loop uh, dash cam, so if I ever end up in a crash, I'll have something to prove it wasn't my fault. 
I know those are already popular all over the world, just not so much here in the States. What else do we got here? Okay, there's our little backup camera. Oh, look at that little guy. wonder where I'm going to be able to mount this without having to drill more holes. And it came with, it looks like a fairly long cable. And then power cord. What else we got here? It looks like the straps to hold it on and a little doohickey to end up running the wires. Let's see how this will shake out. Oh, something else, huh? I'm putting in new seat covers. Really uh, beautiful, aren't they? <laughs> I even got a new steering wheel cover. I still have to do the one on this side. I'll do that in a few minutes, but let's see how this thing's going to look in here. <sighs> okay. So... That's going to have to mount over to the side, so I'll still have a little bit of the original mirror sticking out, but it looks like it clears the, uh, yeah, it clears the visor, so that'll go right, uh, right about there. That's pretty good. Okay. Let's get on with it. Okay, well, it, it went on pretty easy. It's just held on by these rubber strap things that go around the back and clip onto here. And I gotta wonder how long those are gonna last being exposed to the sun on the back there. Uh, I might have to put something else a little more, uh, well, we'll find out. If they rot away in the next month, then uh, I'm, I'll replace them with some wire or something else that won't degrade so quickly. But before I uh, continue on, and I'm going to do a little test with all this stuff before I start running wires. I'm thinking I'm going to have to run wires underneath my, uh, uh, my headliner or along the rubber on the sides here. Or Before I start doing all that crazy uh, installation, I'm going to just do a real quick mock-up with all the wiring and do a test. But first, I'm going to change out my seat here. Okay, I have everything plugged in on top of this mirror, and now I'm going to power it up for the first time and see what it does. Oh boy. It says my SD card needs to be formatted. Okay. Okay, it's showing the image from the backup camera right now. So, <laughs> that's the image from the backup camera. That's, that looks like a pretty good image. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and there's still uh, the little plastic protectin protection over it. So, let me peel that off. Come on, baby. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, that cleaned it right up. Okay. So this will be a good backup camera. And let's see, how do we... It's a touch screen. Okay, that's, that's my front-facing camera on the left. And my backup camera on the right. <laughs> okay, this thing seems to work pretty good. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and install it. Okay, so I have to figure out somewhere back here that I can place this little camera. It's got a cool little mount. Um, you know, I wonder 
If I put, if I took this lock out, I wonder if I could mount it behind here to use the lock hole. I never lock this. No one's going to steal this tailgate with all of this damage and all of these screws, all of this. So I, I don't think I can ever remember locking this in the 21 years I've owned this truck. So maybe that's the hot ticket. I need to open this up and see if I can actually mount this behind this lock. Well, I got it out and looking in here, it looks like the whole thing is loose a little bit at the bottom, like something's wrong with the way it's mounted. But the lock is on the edge here, so I'm going to pull off these two screws and let the whole handle thing pop out and see if there's an easy way to take that lock out. Okay, that came out fairly easy. Didn't have to unhook any of the uh, rods or anything. And it looks like, that looks like a big enough area for that camera to fit inside. It looks like the whole lock will come out if I just pull out this little metal clip. So let me try that. Yeah. Coming out pretty easy. And there's my lock. Hmm. Let me see if the camera will fit. Okay, got my little camera. And Oh yeah, fits right in there. Uh, looks like if I take off this little metal mount, oh, it fits. I want to say it fits like a glove, but yeah, I think I can get it forward enough where that camera will come right up against here. Oh, that'll be cool. How custom is that? I guess it would go like that. So. I'll have to make sure that I'm orienting this thing correctly. Like it should be probably more like that. And huh. yeah, I might have to do just a little tiny bit of shaving to get this to fit, but it's gonna work. This is gonna be cool. Okay, so I took the little back brackets off of the camera and I did not have to shave any of it at all. I was just able to press fit it in and it's tight it's tight it's i don't think it's going to move at all so i think that's pretty neat now let me go hook it up to make sure i have the orientation right this is the way it would work on the truck so that's upright so now let me plug it in to make sure the camera is correct all right so currently it is showing a reflection of me and you can see my hand here, the image of this forward-facing camera. So now when I plug in this rear-facing camera, hopefully we will see me. Let me get the wire undone here. We will see me and I will be right side up. So let's see what we get here. Hey. Yay. How you doing? <laughs> that works pretty good. So there's my backup camera that feeds from this little beautiful camera into my rear view mirror monitor. And it looks like it's a pretty good image. Huh. All right. And now we have a custom camera mount on a vehicle that didn't have a camera to begin with. <laughs> I think this is going to work out great. This It's always been one of the drawbacks of this truck. No backup camera, and you're blind to backing this thing up. And the bumper is brutal. If I bump into something, it just smashes the hell out of whatever it is, because the bumper is made out of real heavy C-channel. Ah, I think I'm going to mount my, uh, my high-lift jack, my farm jack, on my back bumper also, 
that'll be a welding project for another day but now i'm going to put this uh beautiful camera uh handle back in and start running the wiring that's going to be the bane in the butt so i popped off this tail light and you know what i really don't like these tail lights i should get some stock tail lights because these are too dark, they're too hard to see. Anyway, I have a wire here that uh, this is the one I have to run all the way up to the monitor. Hopefully it's long enough. And this one is the trigger wire. I have to attach this one to uh, a hot lead that goes to one of my reverse lights. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm gonna go underneath here and run my wire through up here where it won't interfere with anything and it'll stay up and out of the way all right so here we have it it is installed and it's working you see my front camera okay and the backup camera and it's got both or i can have just the front or just the back. Pretty cool. That'll be very, very helpful. <laughs> Thanks for watching.